Today I'll be talking about wedding traditions across various cultures, notably New Orleans, Yemen, and Ukraine. In New Orleans, there is a wedding tradition where charms are baked into the wedding cake. These charms are then pulled out by the ribbon attached to them by the bride's single and eligible friends. It is often considered an honor to be called upon to pull a ribbon as is a recognition of your relationship with the bride, as there are only so many ribbons. The purpose of this tradition is primarily to act as a form of entertainment, as each charm has a different meaning and acts as a form of divinity, and that the charm you pull out indicates what will occur in your future. Although its exact origins are hazy, the tradition is believed to have roots in Victorian England, where they may have been used as a form of entertainment to advertise the wealth of the family hosting the event. This connection makes sense, as the charms may be kept as mementos of the wedding and worn as bracelets. As mentioned before, these charms have different meanings. The most common charm is likely the ring, which symbolizes that you will be the next to marry. Many modern variations have sprung up, with some being specialized to the New Orleans area. Examples are oysters, which symbolize wealth, and Mardi Gras masks, which symbolize unexpected fun. Charms have been given new interpretations as well, such as the thimble no longer symbolizing an old maid, but rather independence. This is likely due to society's shift in the view of single women. In Yemen culture, henna is believed to not only have medicinal and cosmetic uses, but also magical properties. It's thought to protect its wearers from the evil eye, a belief that a curse is brought upon by an envious stare. After being formed into a paste, the way henna powder changes from a green to red as it dries is believed to prevent demons from recognizing the bride and groom, as it symbolizes their transformation in identity and status. In the southern town of Aden, the bride is gifted a green dress by her husband and then later a red dress by her father. This has both a symbolic significance and an economic significance as it's a chance to show off one's wealth while also connecting to the idea of henna powder changing from green to red. The application of henna historically has its own ceremony separate from the wedding. During this ceremony, the bride acts completely passive, allowing the women around her to take care of her. The woman closest to the bride, such as the grandmother and mother, takes the role of grounding the henna into a powder, which is then kneaded into water, rose water, or wine. The resulting paste is applied onto the palms and soles of the bride, so that evil eye would neither harm the work of her hands nor injure her wherever she went. Patterns applied onto the bride's hands consisted of triangles, grains, and three dots, all of which are gender fertility symbols. These patterns, most prominently the triangle, are present throughout the bride's attire, even in the general shape of her silhouette. In Ukrainian weddings, there is traditionally a bread known as korvai, meaning loaf of bread. Its creation is influenced by the belief of the law of contact, that direct contact between objects transfers magic. Hence, only happily married women should participate in its creation. Historically, around seven women participate in the creation of korvai, however, this number can vary. Typically, these women are relatives or village members. The main ingredients used for korvai are a pair of eggs and wheat flour. Like the eggs, the decorations are also done in pairs, including birds such as swans or doves, pine cones, grapes, and periwinkle vines, which all symbolize fertility, wealth, and eternal love. What is done with the korvai varies, as it can be presented at the wedding, where it is shared with the guests who exchange a gift for the piece of bread. Some may choose to reserve it only for the married couple or for a religious figure. In some variations, the bride and groom tear the korvai apart, as whoever gets the bigger portion is believed to become the head of the household. During ancient Greece, a form of entertainment was provided by either songs being sung or poems being recited during the wedding. The content of these were based on what was specifically happening at various stages of the event. For example, historically people recited song-like poems as the bride made her way to the marital chamber. These were known as epithalamiums, a poem celebrating a marriage. These often contained various praises of the couple, comparing them to gods and goddesses. For example, the bridegroom was often compared to Aris, the god of war and courage, as well as a prominent figure of masculinity in Greek mythology. This is demonstrated in a poem created by Sappho, who was a poet of ancient Greece. While meant to express goodwill, these comparisons also reinforce gender roles. In contemporary times, the contents of these songs have shifted. Although music is still played at weddings and songs are still sung by guests, they don't include comparisons to Greek gods and goddesses anymore, nor do they follow them to the marital chambers. For example, here are a couple people practicing for a wedding of a friend. <laughs>
These are only four of many traditions associated with weddings around the world. How will you plan to celebrate yours?